All right. All right. Um, thanks very much for inviting me to, uh, to do this. Um, I think recording it's going to be a good idea. We might uh, get a few people look, looking at it. I thought I'd just start off by, um, by uh, telling you something a little bit about, about myself. Um, and uh, so I, uh, before I retired about uh, eight years ago, I was a teaching and research academic at Curtin University. And I um, was working, my research involved making increasingly cleaner and cleaner rooms. Um, should I be able to see everyone else on the screen? Um, if you're on a phone, I think um, it might be limited in what you can see, Bob, I'm afraid. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Sorry, I was saying that I was, I was um, involved in building cleaner and cleaner laboratories and I won't go into much detail, but other than to say that the final labs that we built in the early 2000s were between 10 and 100 times cleaner than operating theatres. So I knew a lot about, I'd learned a lot about dust, airflow, filters, all this sort of stuff. Meanwhile at home, in this shed here, I'm working ankle deep in sawdust and I didn't put the two and two together until um, when I took long service leave in 2002, I lost my sense of smell and that put the frighteners up me. And so as a result of that, I, um, I uh, started investigating wood dust and just general workshop dust. And, um, you know, started out with these small dust collectors, going to a bigger one. And because I'm a scientist and I experiment and test things, I was measuring... Um, uh, everything I did, I measure. I measured the airflow, the filter efficiency, um, and I had access to all the measuring equipment from the uni so I could measure dust levels and all that sort of thing. And uh, it, nothing really seemed to work until I put a bit of effort in to really understand what was going on. And eventually, um, I decided to um, enlarge my shed. I more than double the size because I was getting ready to retire. I thought I'll do things properly and I um, researched it and sort of built it from the ground up and I tested everything that I did. So I tested all the thing, the flexies, the dust collectors, all the junctions and everything so I could optimise it. Um, when I joined Manning Men's Shed in 2014, they were talking about putting together a new shed and I said to them I'd do the dust collector, the dust collection. And I did that, and then other people on um, um, on the uh, Men's Shed Association found out that I knew a little bit about it, and so they called me in, and I've consulted to um, Kawarama, Bunbury, Rockingham, uh, Wanneroo, um, Mosman, all the sh you know, quite a few sheds, some out in the wheat belt as well, and. Um, uh, I offer this service for free, except for if I have to go to the country, I charge the travel. Um, so if anyone needs help, I'm available to help. I call it taxpayer payback. It was very expensive to train me in all this research stuff. And uh, quite often the general community doesn't get to see the benefit of it. Well, maybe their grandkids will or something, great grandkids. But I thought this would be a good uh, way to pay it back. Um, so I've, I've uh, published or I've put a lot of what I do, the testing results and my recommendations and reasons and all that, on the internet, on the Australian Woodworkers Forum. It's a big online community and uh, I'm one of the top posters on that forum. And they have a, a sub forum called Dust, Wood Dust. And I've put a lot of information on there. I've got a lot of FAQs and how to's and all that there. So. Uh, that's basically where, where, I, where I'm coming from. And over that time period, I've worked, um, I've tried to simplify the whole process down because it can get completely out of hand if we're not careful. And um, it come, I, I worked out that it comes down to three, three important factors. Okay. Now, you can have the best, biggest dust extractor in the world. But if you don't have these other three things, you're just going to end up with trouble. And the first one is a bit 
um, obtuse, a bit obscure, and that is make sure that your dust extractor is not inside your shed. That's as simple as that. So it, it, it may not be, it may not be, um, you may not be able to put it outside, but you can at least enclose it inside and vent it outside. And I'll just take the camera off and I'll show you my setup outside. Um, Am I connected here? Yep. yep Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to. Sorry, I have to move the camera, but um, I thought you'd like to see this. So I'm going outside, outside my shed, and this is at the back, and there's the fussy neighbour over the back, as you can see, and uh, here is my. This is my. This is my dust extractor and this is serious enclosure, very thick, very thick doors. It's got thick melamine, it's got foam and each of the doors, each of the doors weighs 45 kilos. But it's very quiet and um, it's as quiet as the neighbour's pool pump on the fence line. So the whole idea about that. Okay, I'll come back in now. Sorry to move the camera around, but I'll try to minimise that. Now, the reason for putting it outside is all dust extractors leak. There's nothing you can do about it. Whether it's a cyclone that overflows and just fills your shed up with fine dust, or um, you may be using a bag cyclone, the filters develop holes of plastic bags, the swirling action of the dust, of the sawdust in the plastic bags, gradually wears away little pinpricks of holes in the, in the collection bags and they leak fine dust everywhere. And that's, the, that's one of the main reasons why you see a lot of sheds with maybe half a dozen dust collectors in them and they've just got this pall of brown stuff everywhere. Uh, one of those the, um, is the uh, dust extractor. Um, the second thing, the second problem is that a lot of um, a lot of dust extractors, because of the ducting and the machinery, just don't collect. Uh, they might have a very strong suction, but if you don't use large enough piping, you, ducting, you simply won't collect enough air at the source of the dust making. So, if you're using, for example, four-inch ducting. The most that four inch ducting will carry is 425 cubic feet per minute. Now, if you start adding junctions, long lengths of ducting, flexible hosing, machinery that's throttled down, then you start going down 300, 200. And that's just not enough for especially big machines to collect enough dust. So, um, a lot, I see a lot of um, uh, DIY sheds and even some men's sheds use, still using four inch. It's fine for collecting the uh, chips, but it won't collect the fine dust. You have to, you, if you choose to go with the four inch pipe, you have to also go with massive ventilation. There's just no other way around. Now I'll just pull the camera off again. And most people don't have any idea how much dust is needed to contaminate a shed. I'll just show you, I'll just show you this amount of dust next to that 20 cent piece. So that amount of dust is enough dust to contaminate 10 by 10 by four meter shed to the occupational health and safety limit. Now you usually find that bit of dust, um, you find that much dust down behind your table saw. Now that's, I have to be careful to specify that's in the air. So uh, the dust that's in the air. But those you is you don't very much dust to contaminate the air in the shed. So, and and um and uh, I I visited lots of sheds. I did a sheds back in 2013 and uh visited about 25 DIY sheds around Perth and um most people had uh, had problems. So maybe a little bit about dust now. So that dust you could see there was visible. Um, and it turns out that the, the, the dust you can see doesn't actually hurt you very much. Uh, as soon as it's made, it starts settling out of the air. And um, 
the it lasts for a few minutes in the air before it, it before it's gone. It's what's left behind the fine dust that we have to worry about, and that starts at around about 12, 10 microns or twelve microns for uh, for uh, wood dust, and that dust is the stuff that we get up our nostrils and we breathe in, and when we have a shower and we snot it out, you'll see this stain. That's that's the uh, that's the 12 to 8 micron dust. That's the stuff that causes cancers and is why wood dust is um, recognised as a, a cancer-producing material uh, agent. Now, the chances of getting cancers from that are actually quite low. What's more significant is the really fine dust, the stuff that is around about 5 microns or smaller. Now, it's so fine that it stays in the air for hours and it will, you can breathe it in. And fortunately, we breathe most of it straight back out again because it doesn't rattle its way down like little bullets. It actually rides the air currents and comes straight back out. Now on the way out, it does adhere itself to little moisture droplets and can stick in, the, in accumulate and stick in the back of your throat and nose. A bit like the COVID virus does. And um, uh, we'll maybe talk about that later. Um, so this very fine dust, um, the, the uh, medical effects of that are not very well known. But what they do know is that people that live in dusty countries have a shorter lifespan. And they've done all the testing and elimination of all the other variables. And um, if you live in a dusty country, you will have suffer from more diabetes, more strokes, more blood pressure problems, not just respiratory problems, other problems as well. And this led to a revision of fine dust being the eighth leading cause of death in the world to the fifth leading cause of death in the world. And somewhere between five and seven million people a year die from fine dust exposure. The uh, 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 bushfires are a really a good example. There will be an increased mortality from the bushfires, probably a lot more than have died from COVID. In fact, almost certainly there will be thousands that will be affected longer term. Now, uh, hat, I'm not a medical person, but my understanding is it, is it triggers um, things that you have, you may already be susceptible. So if you're susceptible to some respiratory problem, it'll you might develop asthma. Severe, if you've already got asthma, you go to severe asthma. If you're borderline blood pressure, you'll become danger blood pressure. If you've got um, a stroke issue, you'll get, you could get a stroke. So the, um, the amount of dust in this little container down here, that is an old standard from the 1970s based on English timbers, beech and oak, and uh, it really suits um, a 20 year to 30 year old woodworker, uh, carpenter. It doesn't take into account toxicity of Australian timber, which is more toxic. It doesn't take into account age. It doesn't take into account pre-existing health conditions. And that's the sort of people we're dealing with in men's sheets. So you really should divide that amount in that container there by about 10 to be um, safer for, um, for uh, men's shed type situations. And this is something that's very hard for people to, uh, to understand is how little is needed. So let me go back now to um, the ducting. So you'll see in my shed here, uh, lots, of, uh, lots of ducting, six inch ducting, and it looks a bit silly in a, in a uh, in a small shed like this, but this is what is needed to extract the dust from big machinery. So you might be able to see down here, there's a table saw and there's a router next to it. Over the back is a big sander, the band saw on the layer. There's a, uh, you can just make out a plane of thicknesser. So after the ducting comes the machinery. Now I'll illustrate that with a planar thicknesser because down on the bench top here, you'll see the old hood 
from the planar thickness up. And you'll see it had a four inch extraction and a very tortuous and twisty pathway for things to get through. So I'll talk about that one in a minute. The easiest thing you can do is actually take off the four inch ports. Most of the machinery comes with four inch ports and replace them with a six inch port. And that plus six, six inch um, ducting will make an enormous drift dif difference to the fine dust that's collected. And remember, for the dust to get out of the machine, some air has to get into the machine. And so you may have to add auxiliary entry ports into cabinets and things like that. I'll go around and illustrate some of those things, uh, how I did that. I'll just show you how I did the, uh, how I did the planar thickness there. Now this is overkill, but it shows you the extent that um, uh, will make a huge difference to your uh, butt up on there. I think you can just see that. So this is the original. Remember the original one with a little port there? And what I did is I completely remade that and I made it up out of stainless steel sheet. And um, you see the, the new one here. I think you can see that. Yep. Firstly, notice the six inch, the six inch duct in, right? And this is out of stainless steel from a clothes dryer drum. I, I collect clothes dryer drums from the side of the road and use the stainless steel for lots of things to do with dust extraction. It's just pop and silicone. Um, pretty, a pretty key because there's an interlock involved in this in this uh, hood uh, that prevents it from uh, stops the machine if you lift it up like this. Um, but that was the that was the extreme one that I did, um, and uh, it uh, it's skill level uh, uh, sort of a good handyman because it's just pop rivets and. Um, it's just a matter of getting the shape right. Okay, I'll pick this up now and I'll go around the shed and show, show you some machine conversions. So sorry about the jumpy, the jumpy. Uh... So this is the band, this is the belt sander. And uh, I don't know whether you can see that. Yep. So originally just here, there was a square, tiny square port about uh, two inches by three inches and it was near useless at, with a four inch port on the back it was near useless at collecting the dust so I added this hood here, six inch hood and it's a bell mouth hood and I'll talk about those in a moment and it's connected by a six inch pipe all the way uh, back to the dust collector and uh, there are secondary collectors on here because it's got a disc as well. And um, this, this duct here can be connected to, sorry, this duct here can be pulled off and connected over to here. Uh, where have I got it here? Yeah, down here. And then when, the, when this goes around, when this uh, goes around, air goes in this point here and up through there. And this is very efficient, a very efficient uh, system for extraction. So it's just a matter of pulling that off, pull that off and poke that on there. This is just an auxiliary port that I use sometimes as a vacuum uh, device for a vacuum cleaner. Now we'll go to the bandsaw. Now bandsaws are, are really awkward to deal with because um, this, this, thing here does next to nothing right and the one that does the most is is the no it's a bit hard to see uh, I need to come up. <laughs> Sorry about this. Hang on, I'll just get it up out of the way. Do you see that drum down here on the floor? So that hose there goes onto there. Currently, this is set up to collect dust from this um, abrasive uh, sander here, this metalwork sander. 
and you can see that this is the uh, inlet there so it runs off like that and the sawdust goes in there the drum the drum is used to catch the hot sparks because uh, you don't want on a hot bit of metal going down the dust extract into your dust, dust extract it'll start a fire. Yeah. The other one, the other machine that uses four inch ports is the uh, is the drill press. And you can see it over here. It's got to move it around. And drills don't drilling doesn't make a lot of fine dust, it makes lots of chips, but it doesn't make fine dust. And so you can get away with a 400 well, it's only got about 280 at that point, but that's plenty for what's needed. And while we're in the metalwork end of the shed, you might want to see my ventilation. This is my tomb hood where I do the welding, spray painting, and um, in chemi chemistry experiments, as I do quite a few things on corrosion. And the fan for that is up here. And that's a, uh, that's a 1600 cubic feet per minute and it just extracts all the fumes to the outside. So this um, this is handled by ventilation. Welding's handled by ventilation. Uh, you can't really um, welding, particularly stick welding, is quite sticky. The fumes are quite sticky. If you try to use a filter, you just have to keep cleaning the filter, replacing the filter. Just and that's two hundred. Sorry, Bob, we can't really hear you very well. You might need to um, move to another part of the shed. Yeah, no, what's happened is I'm a long way from the Wi-Fi. I'm about 30 metres from the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi wi <laughs> is up in that room there. And right. if I have the door closed, <laughs> I lose the signal. You got okay. it back now? Yeah, yeah, much better. Okay, this is a lie. I'll step it. Sorry? Yes, much better. It's all right? Yeah. yeah. I'll just step the so you can see the full lay there. And um, this is just using a naked bell mouth hood. This is here. You need a screen, otherwise your work just disappears up the spout. And um, uh, I'll talk um, I'll talk about, while I'm here, I'll talk about making the bell mouth hoods. I used to make them out of MDF, and I'll show you one of those in a minute. But um, this is the, the way I make them now. I use this, um, use this um, former here. And what I do is I put a piece of PVC pipe on it and then run it very slowly, run it at about that speed like this, and heat it up with a hot air gun. And then I... I uh, can push that here and the belt, the PVC is soft and it goes out to there. So I've got, this is for the four inch bell mouth hoods and down here, you see the one for the former for the six inch bell mouth hoods. Now this is extremely effective and because it's pretty close to the dust extractor, um, this here extracts probably 950, 1000 cubic feet per minute. And it, it's really dramatic. Um, the difference between having this bell mouth hood on or not. Because one of the things that bell mouth hoods do is not only do they give you more airflow, they also increase the airspeed further away. So if the airspeed at this point here, you see my finger, air point at the airspeed at this point here is X meters per second, then with the bell mouth hood on, it becomes two X or if it's X meters per second there, if you come out here, and you'll still get X meters per second with the bell mouth hood on. So the chip scatter is really, it doesn't eliminate chip scatter. It can't, it's impossible. Um, but I can stand at this point here and turn, and I've got my particle detectors running, 
and I'm exposed to shed, outside shed air. Um, it's, it's as clean as the outside shed air. And there's no fine dust released into the shed. Okay, the table saw, this is an old, an old um, um, contractor type table saw. And originally it had a two inch port out the back. That's all it had. So I gutted all that and I added a hopper with a six inch, uh, um, six inch extraction. And it actually goes under the floor and then up the wall and around like that. Um, I managed to get that in just before I um, uh, poured the slab for the shed. Now what you notice something rather funny is these uh, pink woolly things hanging down here. This is to demonstrate how you can, um, uh, maybe I'll get the, I'll put the camera back on the tripod because uh, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be uh, needing to use both hands probably. I, I need to be careful around a running saw. Um, so sorry about this. I was going to bring my other tripod down, so, but I've only got one iPod, iPod, uh, oh, sorry, iPhone bracket okay let's see we want to be able to see the pink frilly things can you see the pink frilly things yep, yep. not really can you in the, just, right. in the bottom lower half yeah I, I can lower this down i realize can you see this now yeah yep, center of the show okay so let me go around the other side oh no, I'll need to stand around here because I want to turn the dust extractor on. Okay. Uh, so currently nothing's, th these are called streamers, streamer tapes. And they, you can buy them, but they're really easy to make yourself. A few bits of wool or cotton and a bit of tape. Okay. And these are used to demonstrate airflow, where the air is going. Because where the air goes, that's where the fine dust will go. And quite often, if you you got poor dust collection, <laughs> you'll see the dust flying off and so you'll know where it's going. But once you get rid of the chips, it becomes really hard to work out where the, where the um, fine dust is going. You, it ends up in another corner on the other side of the shed. That's where it ends up, some of it. So this is a way of testing where the air's flowing. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to turn on the, the table saw and you'll see the effect of the table saw on the airflow. No dust extractor, just the blade going around. So what I want you to watch is where the uh, streamers go. Then I'll turn on the dust extraction and you won't be able to hear me do it and then you'll see, because it'll be too noisy and then you'll then you'll uh, see where the air streamers go. So look for a change in direction of the air streamers. Okay I'm going to turn the saw on now. <laughs> So maybe I'll, maybe I'll just stop it there. And what you saw is you saw the, the air flow out there and, flow, and these things flow out there and these ones tuck in. What happens is the, the blade rotates in this direction and so it pulls air from the back and throws it out the front. And that's what it does. That's what it does to the fine dust. So it's pulling air in here. It actually pulls dusty air from under the cabinet, under the table, up above the cabinet and flings it out that way. And so unless you, your airflow in your dust guard is greater than that produced by the spinning blade, you won't have successful dust extraction. I've spent years trying to solve this problem. <laughs> and my main thing was to have the back of the, can you see that the back, of, that's open, completely open. So air can go in and air can, co air can go out. So now I'll start the saw again. <laughs> Okay, now the dust extraction is going on. Oh, wow.
think you'll, you can see how effective that is. Sorry about the noise. This is a, these screamer tapes are really useful. You can stick them around the edges of bell mouth hoods. And while I'm talking about bell mouth hoods, it's actually a little bell mouth hood. There's a bell mouth, yeah, reverse bell mouth hood going up in there. What I did was I used a, a router round over bit to smooth the edges. And I forgot to put the light on. Because that <laughs> allows you to see it. So this ridiculous piece of engineering, it's actually, it, it, it will sit where you put it because there's a cantilevered, um, I have to tension it up a bit. Um, but this um, hood is really effective for dust. So uh, that gives you some ideas. Okay, let's get back to here. I just talk about these bell mouth hoods. Um, so if you just use a naked duct like this, you turn on the dust extractor, the, uh, the negative pressure created around here produces airflow from a number of directions. This is just a naked duct, nothing else. So basically air from here goes straight down, air from over here goes there, air from here will go that way, collide with the air going from here, and even air from over the back here will want to creep up and go around like that. And what you end up with is a huge turbulence ball here. And so not as much air goes through as should go through. Now this is a uh, Belmouth hood turned out of MDF sandwich. Um, I'm now graduated to the, the other ones. But the, these, these Belmouth hoods, the curvature there allows for the air to go in in the streamlined flows. And a little bit of air does leak up over the back here, but nowhere near as much as the other duct. And the theory for these was developed by racing car drivers in the 1960s before they had turbos. And they used something called a downdraft um, carburetor with what they call velocity stacks. And the ideal shape is a tall trombone-like shape but you can't have a tall trombone shape behind a laid up against the wall. And the other place that they're used is in hi-fi speaker cabinets where uh, you need to have the air moving very efficiently from in and out of the back of the speaker cabinet. So what they do is they put a pair of these, of these small, usually smaller, I've actually got one on the floor, an old um, boom box on the floor here. I'm trouble is covered with crap, I could have shown you. Um, where they they um, and and they uh, hi-fi people have the same problem. They don't have a lot of space to put great long horns. So what they did was they did the computer modelling, and they worked out that this radius, if this radius of curvature was half the radius of curvature of the duct, you would get almost the same as a trombone shape efficiency. So this is a hundred mil duct. That radius of curvature needs to be half but it needs to be half the radius. Radius was 50, so that radius of curvature has to be 25. And 37 and a half for a six inch, uh, 37 and a half millimetres for 150 mil pipe. Um, and it works extremely well. It, another reason that it worked, another demonstration of it working, is the dust, uh, the, in, the electric motor that drives the dust collector, the current drops. That shows it's moving things more. Um, so uh, the current increases. That means it's moving more air, doing more work. Sounds odd, but that's how it works. So that's bell mouth hoods. Um, another issue with uh, dust collection in men's sheds is getting the members to remember to turn on, on the dust extractor and to turn and open up all the gate valves. Now, there are beautiful technological solutions. You can buy automated uh, blast gates, and I advertise these on the, um, I put a link up these on the Men's Shed Association website. And uh, they're about $400 each. And if you've got a shed with, um, you know, 15, uh, 15 machines, then you're up for more money. Now, I've got a really simple solution um, that I implemented at South.
earth, uh, which I'm sorry, I'll have to move the surroundings. But what I do is I connect these pressure switches, $3 on, a, on AliExpress. And if that switch is not closed, the machine won't start. So the members are sitting there pressing the button, go, hey, it's broken, it's broken. And I say, have you opened up the, turn on the dust extractor and opened up all the gate bells? Oh, no, I forgot. So these can be wired in with your switch. You may have to wire it via a relay because they're, they're only good for uh, um, uh, they're, they're only good for six amps or something like that. So if that if if I haven't got so the the pressure line goes up to there. So if there's no vacuum pressure there, this won't allow the machine to start. Three dollar solution, really easy. I've got that on the on the lathe as well. So up over to here to a pressure switch. Uh, so that one, that one's connected up and so is the table saw, although I've disconnected it for the experiment that I wanted to show you. I haven't got it set up for the planar thickness yet, but I, I will do that some stage. The planar thickness is not the thing you tend to use on a sort of occasional basis. The problem is you tend to go quick cut on the table saw or quick sand on the sander, uh, more, cut a bit off on the bandsaw, back to the sander, and you're too lazy to, to switch the gates and turn the right things on. When you've got the pressure switches there, it forces you to do it. Now, it is better if you were to be able to push a button and it opened up the gate valve, but I can't afford it, and not all men sheds can. Um, that's probably enough for now. I'll take some questions and then see how the discussion goes. Is that okay? Yeah, wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll just kick us off, um, if that's all right. Uh, yep. the, the forum that you um, said that you post a lot of this information on, what was that named again? Uh, that's called um, uh, oh, um, woodworkersforums.com. Yeah, it's wonderful. forums with an S, right? Mm -hmm. So there's... Um, uh, www.woodworkersforums.com and um, it's got oh, 100,000 members, it's international, most of them are Australian mm -hmm. uh, and most of them are not active, I mean most of them just um, are lurkers, they just look, it's fine, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, if you want to see the photos you have to register but um, you don't get a lot of emails from them, they don't plague you I think you get one a, one a month or something, right? Um, now it's got oh dozens and dozens of sub forums. It's got um, machinery, hand tools, green woodworking, wood turning, pen making, you know, lots and lots of things. And it's got one of the forums is on wood dust, and um, that's where I put a lot of my my stuff, right? Um, it's not always easy to find things, but um, as the search tools are not very good. But if you actually search from within Google, you actually do better searching than from within the actual forums. Um, anyone else got any questions for Bob? Look, yeah, I'll ask a question. What sort of, um, do you just use bags? In your dust extraction, or have you got cyclones or theme filters? Or I'm, I'm just, I've just got um, two bags, twin bags, and um, see, so I'm, I'm only about a 30, 40 percent woodworker. Uh, I used to be 100 percent, but in the last five years, I've become more of a metal worker, and I use the dust extractor for metalworking, um, but. Um, if I was making a lot of um, wood chips, like thicknessing a lot of things and sanding a lot of things, I would get a cyclone. But I don't, I can't justify it at the moment because uh, uh, you've got to be really careful with cyclones. Uh, cyclones are not a small dust extractor solution. Um, they, the, the cyclones rob the uh, rob the uh, dust collectors' power to collect air. They, they impose a pressure loss on the system. And so 
to really be to really ha a really you know cyclones I reckon are four horsepower and above territory. If you put a cyclone on a three horsepower machine or a two horsepower machine, you lose too much airflow. And so what what the result of that is, you leave the dust behind in the shed. You don't collect it in the first place. So you need a big impeller, a 15 or 16 inch impeller, and at least a four horsepower motor. I, my horse, my extractor is 13 inch impeller and it's got a four horsepower motor on it. Maybe I'll talk about that. Um, and what I've done on mine, is I put a variable speed drive on it, right? So I can, um, I can change the speed of the impeller. And the problem with a lot of uh, with European and Australian systems is they run at 50 hertz. So the motor runs slower than the North American guys who run at 60. But I can just click this little button here and that will boost it up to 60 hertz. Or conversely, I can Click it round to here, and it'll drop it down to 40 because it's incredible. It's incredibly loud. I'll put I'll put the um, the lathe on. And you can see it, it's really hard to judge volumes on a uh, on a mobile phone. Sorry about this, but this is 60 hertz with the. Uh, let me make sure everything's off. Yeah. Sixty. Now that's forty. That's much more acceptable. If I'm just doing, if I'm just doing, um, uh, you know, light spindle work or whatever, forty is enough, right? But if I'm doing. Um, uh, if I'm roughing down a big blank, I'll put it up to 60. I have to wear earmuffs. It's too loud. Um, and that's how you know your, your dust extract is really working. Is if it's loud, it's working. And that's why you can't go outrageous with dust extractors. I mean, you could put a honking great turbo thing on a four-inch uh, extraction, and you can suck air, but you'll, it'll sound like a jet airliner and it'll annoy the crap out of the neighbours, and not to mention any other people working in the shed. So that's basically the limitation you've got uh, with the airspeed. Oh, something else I just thought of is, I just here, you can see a tangle of... Uh, is my hand showing? Yeah, yep. yep. yeah, yeah. Okay, this is actually my power tool extraction. So I take that off and then I go to the bench and I can connect up sanders and whatever. And um, it's e easily as effective as a, uh, even though it's only two inch hose, it's bigger than the vacuum hose. Because what happens on power tools, is modern power tools have a fan built into them. And if you can't, if, you, if your extractor tries to extract more than the fan, it doesn't work. You, 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 don't, you can never extract more than what the fan on the power tool can give you. And as long as this can extract more than the fan, you'll extract from that. So you don't need to use vacuum cleaners and they're horrible noisy things as well. Plus they leak and plus they, they generate, some of them generate more fine dust than they, uh, than they collect. I've done lots of tests on them. We, we tested lots of them for our clean rooms and uh, they're terrible things. And if you can afford it um, and you're keen on vacuum cleaners, I'd set it up two inch piping around the shed, ducted vacuum system, put the vacuum cleaner outside. Um, but if you've got a good dust extractor, you don't need to. And it's, it's a bit awkward trailing this hose behind you everywhere. So what I've got um, wire mesh holding insulation up, let's put an Oki strap up and that holds it up and I can work it, that holds it up Sorry. That holds it up and I can work around easily underneath. So this is very a very good system. Any other questions? Um oh, Trevor, I think you're uh, on mute if you Thank <laughs> you.
the way. Um, with the with the ducting, which is the best sort of ducting? Is it metal or plastic tube? And also, while I'm well, talking about ducting, um, I have been to um, the Darwin shed, and in Darwin they've got four 3D printers, and they're printing those bell mouth housings and also the elbows. All the elbows they printed to get the angles they wanted are just 3D printed. Yeah. Um, if you can afford it, the 3D printing is not cheap and it takes a long time. But if you can, if you've got the setup to do it, that's fine. Um, uh, the amount of plastic you use is uh, quite significant. So it'd be line ball whether it's cheaper. But you're right about the angles. Now, let me talk about the angles. Okay, so um, I've done most of this in stormwater pipe, right? And these, ang these takeoff angles up here are 45, but the optimum angles should be less than 30. So if you could print these at 30, that'd be, that'd be fine, right? Um, so a 45 plus a 45 gives you a right angle, right? Which, uh, which is fine. Um, if you want, um, uh, over here, I used, this is before I did my testing. I used, um, I used a 45 and a 45 to make a 90. These days I wouldn't do that. These days I would do it like this. These days I would do it with, uh, you can see it up there. Uh, it's hard for me to see. That, oh, yeah. that, that radius of curvature is nice. It's a very efficient curve. And uh, they're only available in the drain uh, vent and waste um, ducting uh, system. Everything else is, um, is uh, storm water. Oh, while we're here, you can look at this uh, rocker gate. This is a uh, gate that operates when, you're at, when it's out of your reach. And the, the automated gates, I don't know whether you can see that. It's hard for me to... Yeah. Yeah. So that's open and that's closed. That's up out of the way. This is another type of gate. This is from a four inch from a four inch uh, drill press extractor, just little pops in there. Um, this is another, this is a rocker gate, another rocker gate. But then usually I'm using the slider gates if I can access them. So it's a simple slider. Um, yeah, and going back to the ducting, um, uh, if you can afford metal, then it's, metal's nice. Um, but PVC is, uh, is a lot cheaper and it's also, um, you can, it's called Lego it these days. So you can connect um, the ducting up as you, as you like it. And the old um, furphy of uh, grounding the system, it's not a problem. Um, the physics of it is all wrong. You can't get sparks. Uh, I mean, there must be hundreds of thousands of PVC ducted systems there have been fires in dust extractors, but they've almost all been from hot bits of wood ending up in the dust collection bags. And uh, that's how the fires have started. Um, it, physically, uh, it's, not, um, it's not possible to get sparks inside the ducting when you use uh, big enough sparks. You do get sparks, but they're so small because PVC is not a conductor. Um, you can get sparks inside metal ducting if a bit of metal gets collected up and goes rattling its way down the, down the uh, tubing, down the pipe, and that can make sparks, which can be a problem. And the other thing is, it's really hard to, to make wood dust explode. You've got to have the right air and dust ratio. And the problem is that the air and dust inside the ducting is very rarely constant it's all over the place because there's no streamlined flow in these ducts it's all very turbulent and so it's swirling around and um it, it's just really just too hard to do i mean people do worry about the static on the outside and they do try and ground things on the outside but um 
I'm not, um, you know, it doesn't worry me, but it does worry some people. So they do that. Hi, Bob. I was just saying, Bob, if, it, if people are looking at doing the, um, um, the ducting using polypipe, uh, probably be worthwhile talking to the Darwin men shed because they've done all this, uh, the angles and the bell mounts, and they've actually, when I was there, they had four 3D printers alongside each other, just doing nothing but printing those things. Yeah, probably be worth getting them to do it for you. Exactly, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the only, um, uh, you have to go to very shallow angles to get a benefit. And the problem is when you go to a shallow angle, you have a, you suddenly have a very long takeoff. So this is a 30, this is a 30 degree up here. Yeah. That's a 30 degree there, right? But if you start swinging that around, then you have to have it longer and longer and longer before that separates out to there. So space becomes an issue if you go to very shallow angles. And the difference between a 30 and a 45 in six inch is not that significant. It is in four inch. It, it, I've measured it and it makes it, it does make a difference. Yeah. Hi, Bob. It's, Hi, Ocean. it's not Swim Dusty, it's Garvin from the Fremantle Mansion. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Uh, so, this is a good system for a one man shed, I assume. Whereas our situation is where we've got a big Felder 200 dust extractor which sits outside. Yeah. Yeah. But what I find is it's superb if two machines are running, but if you turn on three or four, which is often the case with lots of members using it, then it seems to struggle. So my yeah. question is, are we better to have the one unit trying to pull everything out with that kind of range of machinery use, or are we better to have two separate units? What size ducting are you using? So the ducting that comes in off the Felder is 200, and then it splits down to 125, and then it goes to four inches, or 100 mil to the machines. That's your main problem. I reckon you find if you were to go if you were to stay, uh, I, I, I'd, I'd go from eight inch, eight inch on the felder, yep. two hundred on the felder. Yeah. Is 200 it two hundred on the? On the it's two hundred on the felder. Yes. Yeah. I'd go from I'd go from eight. Yeah. I'd go from eight inch on the, from the trunk lines. Yep. And six, six inch. Six inches. That's to the, the way machine. I do it with um to the machines. So um, out of the out of the felder with an eight inch, go to the nine inch. You you won't get drop out. I've, I've played around with that system, okay. and because that's what we have at at the Manning shed, we have an eight inch collection, yeah. nine inch pipe, six inch ducting, and uh, the um. You, what happens when you when you run multiple machines? Um, what you lose on an individual machine, so there is a bit of redistribution of the dust inside the shed. But if you have all three machines open, you will scavenge the fine dust. But you've got to have six inch ducting because right. if you don't have that, you won't get the maximum flow through the system. Yeah, um, I've done a time analysis of. The work on a men's shed. So even though the machine is running, as in on, the actual time that it makes dust is not 100% of the machine time. It might be 40 or 50 or 30%. So it's it's that point at which it makes the dust uh, if they coincide when you get spilled into the shed. But if you've got all the machines, uh, three machines running, if they're not collecting from near the uh, near the thing, they'll be collecting from somewhere over there and whatever. And so you get this good uh, venting from the right. shed. But if everything goes down to four inch, 
you, you won't get it. Yeah. All right. And and that's something I haven't talked about is ventilation. And um, for even for a big men's shed, I really recommend putting in a uh, evaporative air conditioner, not to use it as an air conditioner, but to use it as a ventilation system. Because you've always got hand tools, people with power tools, people forgetting to turn things on. And at the at the manning shed, the the most important extraction system in the building is the is the evaporative air conditioner. Not running it as an air conditioner, but just running as a ventilator. And I've done some dust measurements on it and it will flush the shed of fine dust in about three minutes. It's really effective. It's a bit it'd be awkward on cold days. <laughs> <laughs> You've got cold air go. outside. You've got to put a jumper on. But, um, uh, yeah, so, um, and ventilation is really good for uh, do-it-yourselfers as well. If you're only a weekend um, warrior, so to speak, small dust extractor, then, yeah, get three or four bathroom fans, connect them up, and uh, that'll be way better than, than nothing. Right? So. So, another question. Have you... Oh. Of the automated uh, automated systems that are available, have you have you tested any of them? We have the IVAC in use at the men's shed, and that really works well. But uh, the Felder is three phase, and it's a little bit hard to hook up. Um, yeah, um, is is the Felder is the Felder um, direct onto the three phase? It's three phase, yeah, direct onto the three yeah, phase. Yeah, so the easiest solution, it's a, a $250 solution, is you put a, um, a variable speed drive on it and then you can control at low voltage um, it being turned on and off automatically, okay. right? That's so good. I'll try and show you that. So this variable speed drive here, this blue yeah. line here, I turn it on and off from there. But I could put any number of interlocks. This is a low voltage line. It's a 10 volt line. Yeah. And so you, whatever you can turn on and off switches here, you can, uh, it will control it without it having to interact with the high voltage. Sure. It's a very nice, safe system. And these also work in the same way. By the way, this is a delayed off system. So if this is on, So it's now turned on. And now I turn it down to here. Now you'll see a flashing light there. That yeah. means it's going to run for another another two minutes. Oh. No, it didn't work. <laughs> that always happens when you're demonstrating something. It should run on for another two minutes. Something wrong. Yeah. But um, yeah, you can control with a variable speed drive. Not yeah. only can you run it faster, and that would be really good for your felder as well. Um, yeah. uh, but you could also run it, you could also control it with the low voltage systems that are available on those things. Sorry, I'm, I'm hogging the airways here. What about M-class dust extraction on the on the vacuum cleaners you can buy like Pestool and Metabo and that kind of thing, so for standalone routers or that kind of thing? Sorry, sorry, what did you want to know about them? So you can buy these industrial vacuum cleaners now. Yeah. For yeah. Power tools. Some of them are yep. rated at M class. Yep. Are they any good? Um, the first, I've, I've tested quite a few vacuum cleaners. Yeah. Um, the, they're all, well, all of the expensive ones are really good when they're new, but they have to be maintained. Right. So you have to wipe out the seal um, and you have to keep them under, you know, I, I tested two Festools for a fellow running a workshop over in uh, Myree. And um, one was six months old and one was two years old. And they both had the same leaks on them. Because what happens is people open them up, they're a bit careless putting them back together. A little wood chip gets uh, caught in the seal. Yeah. So people you have to learn how to, how to treat them. Now, the, the, the filtration is, is good, um, but some of them don't have, um, some of them, not many of them have, what they call a, uh, they have a, a cooling loop for the motor separate from 
the filtration system. And so the, the vacuum cleaners suck air to cool the motor from outside the filtration system. And the motor actually makes fine dust. It sucks dusty air in and minces it up and makes fine dust coming out. So you want one with a, a motor cooling loop included in the filter circuit. And uh, um, the, yeah, the M class is, um, is, uh, is a good filter. Right. But um, I, I don't like vacuum cleaners. They're too noisy. They leak. Uh, you've got to maintain them <laughs> a lot. Uh, so uh, it's, a, it's from a previous uh, work life that I uh, avoid them. Yeah. But sometimes you've got no choice, you know, because uh, you're working remotely or you, you're working somewhere where you just don't have a dust extractor. So, yeah, then that's fine. Sorry, did someone ask another question? Any, any thoughts on the commercial purification systems you can buy, the overhead ones? Yep. Um, uh, they are really good for... They're, they're, what they're best suited for is... Uh, oh. Hello, Alan. <laughs> hey, g'day, Bob. How you going? Sorry I've arrived right. late on the scene. Uh, just, <laughs> just to sort of echo your, uh, your comments about the dust extraction here in the... Manning Shed, we, as part of our uh, reopening again, we do open every door and window in the place that we can, turn on that overhead um, air conditioner as well, that uh, evaporative air conditioner. And as yeah. you say, in, any dust or fine, smoky, uh, filtery, fine stuff, it blows it away in, a, in about 30 seconds, you can notice the difference. So, yeah. uh, and and it's also good. really good, it's also really good for COVID. Yeah, apparently, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it'll it'll and blow all that out of I've, I've actually tried to contact Norman Swan. You should be talking more about ventilation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I take yeah. your point. You, uh... Yeah, but there's a, there's a woman in um, Kirby Institute in um, University of New South Wales who's very big on ventilation. And um, she gets a little bit of time on the TV, but not enough. But going back to the room afters, um, room air filters are really good if you've got a room that you're going to do some finishing in and you're going to, um, uh, you want to have dust-free environment. And so you, you set up the room, put your item in there, turn it on for half an hour, and then apply your finish. But if you're hoping for a room air filter to keep up with fine dust collection from half a dozen machines, you've got no chance. They just don't have enough flow. Um, so um, it's interesting. I've seen them working really well in certain circumstances. And one example was, I went to a turning convention, WA Woodturners Association. There was a guy demonstrating turning a goblet. And he had one of these room air filters in front of his um, machine. And he was using razor sharp tools. So everything was coming off in beautiful um, spirals of timber. And of course, he didn't need to sand anything. Everything came out perfect. While he was turning, the the dust levels in the room actually went down because he wasn't making very much fine dust. But if you've got a wood turner who's got blunt chisel and then uses, you know, starting at 40 grit, <laughs> it just overwhelm these things. Um, so uh, uh, people say, oh, I'll leave them on overnight. Well, if you leave it on, if you, you don't need to leave it on overnight, the dust will settle out overnight anyway. So, um, I think in a practical, um, you know, large volume operation, um, yeah, you'd need so many. You'd need, uh, you know, three, four, five, six. Um, I mean, I've got one. It's a, uh, it's an extremely fancy hospital grade unit. This is it. This is it up here. Um, and this is a 99.99% at 0.3 microns. Um, but I rarely use it. The only main thing, Thing I use it for is to test my particle counters with to make sure they go back to zero. Um, and by the way, this is our current our current um, micrograms per cubic meter in the shed. We've got 0.05 micrograms per cubic meter in the shed, and that's because I haven't worked in here. I, I cleaned up on Sunday, and I cleaned up using the dust extraction system as a vacuum cleaner and uh, it just sucks all the dust out. So it'll be, this reading here will be what's outside. 
Um, so I've, I've been using these particle detectors um, for about three years. Um, and uh, so I've got a really good understanding of how they're, how they're working. Thank you. Yeah, still going. Thank you. One more question from me, Bob. If you're, yeah. laying out a, if you're laying out a shed, would you have a separate area for the sanding, hand sanding, hand sanders, that kind of thing? Yeah, um, uh, sanding is, is problematic. Uh, hand sanding, power sanding. There's, there's a number of interesting solutions. I think Kawaramuk Men's Shed has set up a downdraft sanding table. So the, basically they have a, um, a bench with a... Um, with a uh, wooden box on the top, about 150 millimetres thick. It's perforated with holes, and then they connect it up to the dust extractor. Um, how it works depends on if you put a large bookcase on the top and block up all the holes, not very well, right? Um, so um, the, the best one I've seen was 2.4 by 1.2, so it's quite big, and it actually had a plastic curtain around it okay. and a roof, right? And so um, people, and they could actually divide it down the middle like this. And so people could work at either end and uh, the air was going in into the table. When, if you decide to do this, there's a real, there's a trick to placing the holes. You want slots or large holes around the outside and small holes in the middle. So that if the dust comes off the workpiece, it gets sucked in to the hole. Um, some people, uh, uh, like using rooms that are highly ventilated, just with um, um, just with um, extractor fans. Um, uh, and a good example of that was um, at uh, Shen, a great big extractor fan on it, and they did all the steel polishing in there. And they were polishing some, you know, not very good stuff. Um, but it was interesting because outside you could see this um, stream running alongside the building of grey dust where the metal dust had <laughs> gone out. <laughs> yeah, so there's a few solutions. Um, yeah, even um, sometimes if I'm sanding here and I'm using the hand sander, um, what I'll do is, uh, can you see this spare port here? I just take, this is what connects to the... Um, this connects to the cone of thickness. So I just pull that down and drape it on the bench. And so at one end of the bench, it's always positively sucking the air away. But I've also got the other ventilators and things there. There's, there's a few solutions, yeah. Very last question from me. Yeah. Do you have a mitre saw in your shop? No, I don't. But I, I, I do appreciate the problems with them. <laughs> um, uh, there's a, on the Woodworkers Forum, there's a couple of very nice solutions. One is a, a curved back cabinet, yeah. right, with a six inch extraction um, on the top and underneath as well. And I believe uh, the guy that, um, well, there's several guys that have done it, and uh, according to them, and one of them's got a particle detector, so he should know, it works, uh, it works pretty well. Yeah, they're a real pain. <laughs> I think at Manning they take theirs outside sometimes. <laughs> yeah, they just throw stuff everywhere. Well, I one more question. So what yeah. about dust disposal? Like our felder has a big hopper that we have yep. to clean out every day and that's clearly not um, that good for our health. I mean, we mask up, but um, what's your solution for disposing dust? Well, it depends what's in it. And the problem is that men's sheds, you tend to find you get things like bits of metal and screws and leaded paint and all sorts of stuff. But if you've got clean dust, um, especially shavings, then um, horse stables would very much like them. Okay. Right? But they, they only want clean stuff. And that's the problem is uh, no, not many people can guarantee a, a, clean, a clean source. Um, I mean, um, at our men's shed, they put it, we've got a community garden and they put it on the, on the garden. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it depends. If you've got a lot of it, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, my stuff's always full of aluminium and 
gr uh, grit and steel and the, so mine just goes in. I, I don't make a lot of vo high volume of dust, so um, I'm not, yeah, but I can appreciate there is an issue. All righty, everybody. Um, if there's no more questions, we might let Bob get back to his day. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Bob. That was really, really interesting and yeah, a great um, a great resource to us. We'll put that on the YouTube channel and we'll put a link on the Facebook group so everyone that missed out today uh, can can check it out in their own time and and learn yeah. something about it because I I had no idea that it was such a. I mean, I knew it was important, but I didn't know it was fifth cause of death or <laughs> what you were saying yeah. at the beginning there yeah. And yeah jeez yeah. so yeah thank you thank you very very much from all of us and we'll we'll have it up hopefully by tonight for all the rest oh, of okay. the blokes to uh, I look, look forward to seeing it yeah, yeah yeah absolutely is this open to the general public or just to man shed um if the, the general YouTube public channel. wanted to look for it they could find it but it'll be within oh, okay. the men shed um It'll be within the men shed circle, so it'll be on our YouTube channel and our Facebook group. But yeah. you know that doesn't mean that if someone wants to look for it, they will find it. If that's yeah. all right, or yeah, 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 wonderful, wonderful. And um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully everyone will check out the forums and learn a bit yeah. more about this stuff. Yeah. Oh, and what was your name on the forum, by the way? You said you were one oh, of the most. Oh, Bob L. Nice. Bob L. Pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah. So if anyone yeah, wants to see, yeah. um, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, posts under that name in the dust section and otherwise. Yeah. Alrighty, everybody. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much to Bob and I'll see you all around. Catch you later. Thank you very much. Bye. Yes, thanks, Bob. See you, mate. Okay, see you later. See you, Bob. Bye. All right.